Hello everyone, I'm Eva, the producer of uh, this project UNI, upcoming uh, film from uh, writer director Camila Andini. And uh, before I share more detail about this project, uh, let's see this video. <laughs> Jadi gimana lamaran yang waduh di? Gak boleh loh Yun nolak lamaran lebih dari dua kali. Amali. Aku gak peduli. is an Indonesian uh, teenage girl. Uh, she's 16 years old uh, in the high school and uh, in the beginning we see that uh, she kind of a girl is really have big ambition, have a dream uh, uh, and it uh, and then suddenly uh, marriage proposal come and then uh, her world is getting narrow, narrow and narrow. Of course uh, for the girl like Yuni, uh, she reject that proposal. But, and then the next proposal and proposal coming, and the third proposal. And according to the myths in Indonesia, or maybe in other area, that's, it's, really, it's really big no to refuse uh, that myth. Uh, it's, it's, it's bad luck, and yeah, this is a story about uh, this uh, talented girl and with uh, that uh, problem. And, uh, next. And, uh, this is the intention from the director Camila Andini and for me as a producer uh, it's really urgent to make uh, this kind of project because as you know that uh, Muslim fundamentalist in Indonesia is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and it's really dangerous It give more pressure on the uh, young generation in Indonesia especially uh, women and for me as a producer it's, uh, it must be executed as, as soon as possible and uh, until now, uh, we aim to shoot this project in September this year, and we uh, have some uh, gap uh, for the budget. Uh, we we still trying to fund the uh, gap, and then uh, we also have some partner attached in this uh, film. So 
uh, I hope uh, with this speech uh, I can find that uh, other partner interested in this project. So it's for me about Juni and please if you guys have questions. <laughs> ya, terima kasih Pak. Uh, congratulations. Uh, pertanyaan uh, dari tadi saya lihat dari awal sampai akhir ada warna ungu. Uh, uh, mungkin ap, bisa jelaskan apa intensi dari story dari penulis menggunakan warna ungu tersebut? Ya, yeah, uh, oke. Okay, I, I will I will try to explain about the purple. Kamu mau Indonesia atau mau Inggris? I will try in English and if I start, I will change to bahasa Jawa. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Camila is really concerned about the, it because it's teenage, and then uh, Camila is think that uh, uh, she want to play with a texture, uh, with a texture, with uh, and then color is part of it. So and then uh, based on our research, every teenage is always always her favorite color mm. in her room, in for bag, uh, for the property, and I think uh, for uni, uh, purple is perfect. Terima kasih. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, hello. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm already looking forward to seeing the film. Uh, I believe it will be produced soon because you guys are uh, very capable. Um, really, just a comment that uh, I just think in in pitching. A project. If you have some footage, just a little bit of footage, which really reveals something about the film you want to make, it shows uh, it shows how yeah it shows how capable you are, and it gives us it makes it real for everybody. So I think it's a really good lesson for everybody that you're sharing uh, today that uh, to give um, to give a sense of the film doesn't take much. Uh, but it was great footage there, and uh, and oh, beautifully edited, by the way, and uh, and that gives people uh, confidence, I think. So um, I wish you great success. Which is this is the first feature film of Makbul Mubarak. Before I explain more about the project, uh, we can see the teaser, please. between two central character that is a relationship between father and son military and civilian uh, master and slave uh, old generation and uh, young generation uh, it is a drama with a lot of, of uh, suspense a thrilling moment and after all we follow this character took out his journey to find redemption we have been uh, developing this project for uh, two years by participated to uh, Torino Film Lab, uh, Thais Deadbind, and recently to Berlinale co-production market. Uh, we secured for the budget 30% uh, uh, from the total budget. Uh, hopefully, uh, we aim the shooting will be uh, mid-2020 uh, and uh, finish the film in the end of 2020. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your presentation. Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, Marco presented this in a pitch competition in Busan. He won the pitch. The he won it. <laughs> so, Mark Wall is already going to Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Does he want to go twice? Okay. Um, because uh, the judges also thought this was a very good film. 
Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you producing? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Do you want to go to that? Well, yes, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen it. I know the story. I think it's a good story. So, congratulations. Okay. Yeah. Looking forward to see the movie. Thank you. So. Selamat. Selamat, yeah. Terima kasih, Pak Ketua. Trying to help improve presentations here, but uh, I, I know that you want to be true to the information that you want to tell us, which is why you're reading uh, from the phone. But I think every pitch is different, and reading the audience reaction to you is very important. It was like if an actor on the stage, if they're not getting any reaction, they need to do something different. So. Anything that allows you to watch us responding uh, would be helpful in a pitch. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Miska. I'm producer of Vengeance is Mine All Other Pay Cash uh, from Palari Films. Um, yeah. So, this film is an adaptation from a novel uh, written by Eka Kurniawan. Uh, for the film, uh, writer-director Edwin and producer myself and Mohamed Saidi, we, we plan to have a co-production with Indonesia and Germany. The Germany side is Palace Film, is basically my previous partner on my previous film, with Edwin Postcards from the Zoo. And we plan to shoot with 35mm. So, uh, we get these rights in 2017 uh, from Pontas Agency Spain, and then in August of the same year, uh, the novel was released in the U.S. So then there's some of the uh, quotes from Huffington Post. And this project we participated with um, International with APM 2017, a most promising project. We have some, some money uh, on it. And then in half 2018, we have post-production award for 35mm from White Light. So White Light Post is basically the post-production for Call Me By Your Name. So um, after this, I will show you a short clip, uh, an illustration of the world of our main character named Ajo Kawir, where he lives in. All other pays cash uh, sets in Indonesia in 1983. Mm -hmm. So in this era um, where um, you know strongmen are very much adored and scumbags are heroes, so you have no space for a weak man to be there. And um, in the young age of 17 years old, uh, Ajo Kawir, our main character, uh, he 
he is forced to witness um, a mentally ill woman being raped by two men in uniform. After that, she becomes important. So, of course, young Ajo Kawir, she tries many things, from erotic novels to an alternative medicine like leech oil, for example, but of course it doesn't work. So, um, to cover and mask his importance, um, he, he, he becomes very brutal and violent. Uh, he wants to make sure like, that no one ever doubt his masculinity. So, then Ajo Kawir became a bouncer. Uh, he got paid for knocking people down. And now Ajo Kawir is famous as a ballsy fighter. Uh, one day, uh, on a mission, of course a violence mission, uh, he met Itam, a lady fighter. So both of them then caught in a very fierce fight. And during this fight, they fell in love. And um, feeling insecure, Ajo Kawir tells Itam, what would you do with a man who cannot get it up? And then Itam responds very quickly and firmly, I would marry him. For once in his life, Ajo Kawir feels that the world is on his side. Unfortunately, uh, on a one rainy day, um, Itam confesses that she is pregnant. Feeling very betrayed and devastated, uh, Ajo Kawir leaves Itang immediately and then he kills someone. And this time, he cannot escape. Instead, he is sent to prison. And now, now we see Itang feel very guilty. She loves her husband. And she blames those two men in uniform that traumatize her husband and makes him impotent. Uh, so he promised, she promised herself that she will find the two uniformed men and kills the rapist and kills them. So at the same time, it's 10 years after, after serving 10 years in prison, Ajo Kawir transformed from a youthful violence into a peaceful man. Now she accepts himself and everyone else and forgives it. And now his penis erects and she's, he is ready to go home. So he rushes to come home that day, um, and then, you, you know, like, really eager to meet uh, his wife, but only to find that Itang is ready to go to jail, because she murdered the rapist. So, finally, at the porch of their house, uh, Ajo hugs his daughter, and then once again, he has to wait, and his penis has to wait again for to function. So this is a tragic comedy, and for me, Vengeance is Mine, All Other Precast is basically a tribute to Indonesia or, or the world now, because we are told that we are great, that the world is a very nice place to live, but uh, there's always uh, scumbags who always manage to manipulate and weaken our, our strength. Thank you. The novel is one of my Indonesian favorite uh, novel. Also, Eka is one of my favorite uh, Indonesian writer. So, the question is why you choose to shoot in the uh, Yeah, I think. Just wondering. Yeah, 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 it's okay. Well, I mean, like, this is like so. Everyone is asking about 35. Um, I think number one is because. Uh, for choosing, you know, material, I think I leave it to the director. I mean, I think that's number one of my priority because I think making artwork, you can use pencil, you can use crayon, you can use oil on canvas or whatever. So for me, digital and 35, it's the same. It's not to be replacing the other. So if he wants to choose to do with 35 and if I can manage to do it, then I don't see the reason why. Selamat ya Dek, maksudnya it's a very strong message, uh, I love Edwin, uh, and you're also one of my favorite producers. 
Sekarang banget bisa dengar lo pitching sekarang. Tahu <laughs> kan deh. Uh, selamat mudah-mudahan uh, bisa segera di shoot. Uh, cuman wondering kalau bisa nanti jadi ke T5. Uh, at the end distribusinya akan ke T5 atau digital. I think the final end since the cinema now is in DCP, of course we will have to transfer it into DCP. But I mean, in any cases that we can screen it still on 35, then that would be lovely. Okay. I think you you're looking at here because I can see sort of two films. I can see uh, I can see the sort of art house film, which is very specific, but I also see an opportunity to maybe make it the story more accessible, which would be interesting. So, I mean, uh, to say as like art house per se, um, I don't think it will be like that, uh, that direction. Uh, with the material that we have, with the, with, 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 the, with the drama, the connection between these two characters of, you know, like thugs basically, and uh, how they portray, like how they communicate through violence, something that even me sometimes don't understand. But I think that will bring another uh, dimension of this film, not as an art house, uh, you know, like per se, because we have some communication elements uh, in here in the film. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I am Sim F. I'm a film director. My previous movie is Susi Susanti. Uh, this is Amanda. My partner is a writer. Okay, uh, first I will explain the project is. Call uh, the title is Radio Rimba, directed by me. Uh, the story about a young boy who came from a primitive tribe that banned technology is trying to fix his broken radio in order to save his village from the threats of their enemy. Okay, uh, Manda will explain the uh, short story. Hi, um, so the story is about a little boy named Rui who comes from the Kui tribe that still reject communications from the outside world and also prohibits technology. Uh, for some time, the Kui's village has been attacked by the unseen tribe. Rui has no father and his skinny body makes him considered as weak. Uh, that's why he always got bullied by his peers. Thus, he is not allowed to participate to guard the village with the other men from his tribe. One day, Rui happens to meet with a mining scientist in the jungle, where, where he receives a radio as a token of gratitude. One night, accidentally, Rui, uh, he realized that the sound of the radio could actually help the village from the enemy attack. And. Um, However, he got caught by one of the police and got his radio broken by one of the chief tribe's men. Um, Rui only has one friend. Her name uh, is Kara. And she tells him about a guy named Kiko um, from their own tribe who were banished um, from their tribe because of his love of foreign objects or technology. So Rui and Kara sets off to a journey deep into the forest and crossing the river to find Kiko. They finally meet Kiko at his tree house and that is full of foreign objects. And after Kiko fixed Rui's radio, uh, the chief tribe and his men come to take the children home. Back home, Rui finally has the chance to prove that the radio could actually help the village from the enemy attack. Um, from zero to hero, Rui's act, uh, heroic action finally got acknowledged. And when the villagers ask him to help to protect their village. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Why? Okay, uh, this is a mixed genre movie. Uh, so this movie share many of my personal interests by addressing bullying and social confirmation on how a child could be seen uh, less than the other only because he appears to be different and doesn't conform to social standard. 
In addition, it also addresses about family roles and values. How, although not related people around us, could also function as family. Okay. Why this movie? This is a mixed genre movie. Yeah, it offers drama and fan fantasy adventure for everyone, and especially children. Well, this kind of movie is still limited. It's a local movie. Uh, with a hopefully Disney style strong uh, Disney style storytelling. Okay. This uh, this movie will explore Papua beautiful scenery with the hope to give more exposure to current generation. Okay. Uh, this movie also offer a great IP. It has a local content with universal storyline, so hopefully it can reach two different level of market children and two adults, locally and internationally. Okay. The content itself has limitless possibility that can be explored. Okay, thank you, uh, our presentation. And okay, uh, my question is, uh, the, the, the story is quite universal. Uh, but when you say about the, this uh, uniqueness uh, and relevant uh, within the theme, what can you explain more, elaborate more about the theme and the uniqueness and the relevant to this uh, uh, time? I mean, the story is very universal at the same time. Uh, it's familiar, uh, but why now? Oke, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, ya, jadi uh, menurut saya tuh saat ini film anak-anak itu yang apalagi yang fantasi agak kurang gitu. Mungkin jadi uh, menurut saya penting banget dan juga value uh, family yang mau diangkat itu juga uh, penting gitu ya, masalah bullying. Kemudian uh, mengangkat Indonesian culture gitu ya, apalagi kita kemarin sempat dengar isu uh, Pixar atau Disney atau apapun yang mau nyari konten lokal gitu. So sebelum mereka yang mengeksplor konten kita, mending kita yang mengeksplor duluan gitu. Kira-kira seperti itu. Rencananya mau shoot di Papua di mananya? Apakah itu real shoot? Maksudnya real location atau nanti akan ada CGI gitu? Uh, akan mix. Uh, mungkin uh, yang establishing wide shot itu akan di Papua dan mungkin yang ketika yang uh, lebih Ya, dalam lebih ke sukunya atau itu bisa kita lakukan di Jawa. Referensinya suku Papua yang mana? Oke, okay, kalau untuk referensi suku pasti on research ya. Jadi uh, sebenarnya sih arahannya ke fiksi supaya kita tidak menyinggung atau apapun ke salah satu suku yang ada.